Did his imperfections make him more likable? I think they made him more likable. They made him more relatable. I, I, I love this. Is I've watched the Hall of Fame speeches my entire life. This to me was the greatest Hall of Fame speech I've ever heard. I, literally, I'm being 100% serious. When I was a seven or eight year old kid, I would practice my Hall of Fame speech. I thought I was going to the Hall of Fame. That's the speech I wanted to give. The speech he gave about his dad, about his family, about his wife, about his kids. Wasn't it interesting that much like his career, he winged it? And, and winged it beautifully in the most authentic way I've ever seen. I, the way the guy represented his wife and stood up for and stood up for that relationship that they had. I know so many people wanted to nitpick, oh, he was flawed or whatever the thing was with Jen Sturger. That is 90% of successful marriages have turmoil in them that people have to overcome and they come out on the other side loving each other other more. It's the journey, man. And him and his family have gone on a beautiful journey. His mom, his dad. Look at look at how he has taken hardened cynical journalist Jason Whitlock. This is what he is. He's what every politician wants to be. Real. Well, he is rich, but relatable. I mean, that's Trump is trying to relate to you. Hillary's trying to relate to you. They both live a life that far exceeds any average person. But so, far, so is Favre. But yet you really feel like I'd have a beer with him and he would want to have a beer with me. Everything about Far, and I don't think it's an act. Like we were talking about with A-Rod, some of it feels a little scripted. Yeah. But with, with Far, there's small little details that he said when he talked about his wife, Deanna, and said he walked in uh, to their house and there were a bunch of kids there and he met his wife for the first time and he said, and then we started going with each other. And that, I was like, man, that's what we used to say when I was growing up. Oh, I'm going with her. We didn't call him boyfriend or girlfriend. It was going with. Every, this dude from the South that's a good old boy, for me as a black man, as a football player, I just see so much of myself and so much of just a real person, man. And, and I see why NFL players yeah. loved him. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. You can stack up all the stats, but I think there is something to be said about being uniquely flawed, is that he drove his coaches crazy. Um, drove his wife crazy, he, but they survived. Yeah, and I mean, in the end, he's a, he, he really, there's a certain ethos with the way he played that is America. Small town kid, overcame, overlooked, gunslinging, made mistakes, sort of a hero, but not, but imperfect. I mean, I think in the end, sometimes Tom Brady is too damn perfect. Brett Favre is the antithesis of that. He is rough around the edges, but if you played quarterback, none of us would be as good looking as Brady, as tall and as dynamic as Cam. Brett's how we'd want to play quarterback. I, I, I love the dude. I cried during the speech. I was in Vegas and like people were waiting on me for dinner. But usually, usually you cry in Vegas for other reasons. <laughs> Absolutely. But when the guy started talking about his dad, I had one of those dads too. Nothing I ever did was good enough for my dad, but he loved me to death. Um, anyway, I love Brett Favre.